Well, we're off and running on this Thursday edition of Thoroughbred Action here from Gulfstream Park West. Jason Blewett joining you from our clubhouse studios. Fast and firm, a lot going on on this Thursday card. Just eight races, but some quality, good-looking two-year-old Philly allowance. And let's get the, the weather and track conditions right now. Fast and firm on day 13 of the 40-day stand here at GPW. Clear skies as well in Miami Gardens as we get on to the main track for the first of eight. Five and a half furlong dash. This is a Florida-bred two-year-old maiden claimer. Claiming prices are 50000 as we send it on up to track announcer Pete Aiello. Racing at GPW. Fast Andrew was very quick into stride and heads off for a clear advantage from Golden Lineup, who's sent out of there hard to be second as Fast Andrew has flown along. He's open five, moving up toward the inside Silver Drill to take second ahead of a driven Golden Lineup, who wanted forward position but does no better than third. From the far outside, it's Regan's Heart from between horses Cappy Hour and Fortunate Friends decides to sit back and wait with less than half a mile to go. Fast Andrew and Lionel Reyes appear on a mission here. The three furlongs from home and still five on top. Silver Drill is there second. Regan's Heart on the outside third. Golden Lineup is back to fourth, but starting to make a bit of ground. Then Fortunate Friends and nothing from Cappy Hour with a quarter of a mile to go. At this point, nobody, and I mean nobody, has had any chance to get near Fast Andrew. Fast Andrew wheels for home on a five-length lead. Into the clear, Fortunate Friends stepped out by Jose Alvarez, and he's the danger as he starts to motor at the leader. Fast Andrew begins to get a bit tired on the outside and Fortunate Friends. He's closing the ground, but he's running out of time. And in fact, he's out of time. Fast Andrew, gate two wire. Fortunate friends made good ground to get second ahead of Golden Line of third, then Silver Drill. Well, inside speed sealed the deal for a very fast gelding by wit distinction. The one fast Andrew could not be caught in this race beneath Lane Reyes, sped to the lead and never looked back. Here's race number two, we stay on the main. How about this, a two-year-old allowance race. We don't run across many of those in this day and age. Got some two-year-old fillies, in fact, battling a two-turn, one-mile distance and a purse of 47,000. And they're off. And Babuela's Love bounces away very well and goes looking for a clear advantage toward the inside. That's Bimini going to try to go after earlier. And far outside, Samoa is going to mix it up. Down inside goes Joe's Sweetness. At the back is Busy Signal. They're separated by three lengths, and they run around the first turn. Jeffrey Sanchez is going to put Bimini on the engine here, and Jockey Edgar Zayas will relent and sit second on the hip of the leader with Babuela's Love. Racing in third is Samoa Joe Sweetness tucked in fourth. And in the red colors, it's Busy Signal, last of the five, with less than six furlongs to run. Down the back stretch they go. Bimini has inside position and a narrow lead at the 5 8 with Abuela's Love moving to be second. Joe Sweetness is at the rail third. Samoa's on her outside fourth. And Busy Signal's now lost a bit of ground, fifth and last, and still only about four lengths off the lead with half a mile left to run. Bimini has the lead, pressed along every step of the way by the favorite Abuela's Love, who's making a move now, and Abuela's Love grinding away at Bimini. Joe Sweetness needs some place to go. Three wide and busy signal with Samoa. Three-eighths of a mile remains. Jeffrey Sanchez trying to get a breather on Bimini. He now leads again by three parts of length as Abuela's Love is asked to quicken second. Joe Sweetness at the inside third. Bimini is on the outside, or rather on the inside Samoa, far outside. That's busy signal with a quarter of a mile left to go. Sanchez and Bimini Bimini turned first on top by two. Abuela's Love has hit the wall. Down the outside and busy signal into the clear comes Joe Sweetness. Final eighth of a mile. Bimini trying to gut it out on the outside and busy signal coming at her. Bimini in front. Sanchez imploring her for more. She's giving him plenty, and this was a real good run. It's Bimini who puts away the favorite and kicks on to win it. Busy signal was second. Joe Sweetness third. Then Samoa. Abuela's Love disappoints and runs last. Well, Bimini handled the stretch out perfectly here. In fact, this was her best race to date. Homebred daughter of Brethren for, for Arendelle Farm, trained by Stanley Gold, who's also got Cookie Dough, who's very talented and a multiple stakes winner. Jeffrey Sanchez, the winning rider, thought the four busy signal ran well to pick up the pieces, checking in second. And with the early double down and that second race in the books, we'll take a little breather back with race three after this.
And welcome back. Already time for the opening leg of Thursday's Rainbow Six at Gulfstream West. Our opening turf race as well. We go five on the grass with this three and up Philly Amare made in Claimer. Claiming price is 16000 And they're off. Slow beginning for Saucy Teen. Quick beginning for our showgirl and Cats Astray. They're the first two out, and they work two lengths clear of Tri-Delta Bay, who comes away racing third. Chastity gets a good spot early, fourth a length better than Saucy Teen, then Toki, and five to the trailer, Noah's Moon Pie. Inside half a mile to go, and this battle continues up front. Cats astray in the two-path, our showgirl along the rail. They're going quickly in three lengths clear of Tri-Delta Bay, who gets a good tracking spot third. Saucy Teen has moved to be fourth, racing ahead of Toki. Chastity had a good run early, and now has dropped back, and still far back to Noah's Moon Pie. Quarter of a mile left to go. Chuck Lopez and off the turn with Cats Astray on top. Our showgirl tries to refire toward the rail second. Try Delta Bay is third. Final eighth of a mile. Cats Astray the leader toward the inside and our showgirl still second. Cats Astray still in front toward the inside. Our showgirl is still second. And that's where she'll finish to Cats Astray who puts him away. Our showgirl was second. Saucy Teen third and then Try Delta Bay. Well, CC Lopez, a great speed rider, and if anybody liked him here, they got paid a nice price, just under 30 bucks on Cats Astray. It went out for trainer Juan Arias and Chucky Lopez aboard. Here's a Florida bred filly by Gon Astray, who really rocked the tote board in the opening leg of the Rainbow Six. And we'll call it as we flip the page, the opening leg to an early bird late pick five. Late five begins race number four, seven furlongs, three and up, and these are two lifetime claimers. Pretty deep field here, running for claiming prices of 25 to 20. And they're up. Oh My Warrior and Fafa both away to smooth beginnings. And between horses, Juan and Pina moves to challenge. Away in fourth is Vincero, taken in hand, only two and a half lengths off the lead. Followed by All Gold in third last. Dunk is second last and Pass the Butter last of all as they run on to the main course. From the outside gates, Fafa and Juan and Bina heads apart. Down at the inside, it's Vincero. Racing alongside him is Oh My Warrior. He's only a length and a half off the lead. It's a 5 eighths. Two back to All Gold and ahead of Dunk and Pass the Butter is last of all as they head to the half mile point. Past the half mile point now, and the battle continues up front. Fafa in the two path at the inside, Juan and Bina. Racing in third is Vincero, Oh My Warrior, fourth, and Asta Quicken. Five ahead of her running on past the butter. Then down inside, Dunk, all golden is last. Three eighths of a mile to go. Fafa on the outside, Juan and Bina toward the rail. Vincero looks to launch an attack in the white and black colors. He's going to try to thread the needle here. Now we'll tip outside. Way in fourth is Oh My Warrior, then running on past the butter with a quarter of a mile left to go. Vincero let go for a challenge on the outside of Fafa, who digs deep and finds a bit more. Past the butter into the clear for Alvarado Jr. Juan and Bina toward the rail. Down the outside, and Oh My Warrior. Five chances here as Vincero hits the lead. Fafa dead game boxing on. Second pass the butter with a late lunge. Vincero close to home with the lead. Vincero in front. Pass the butter was second. Fafa finished third, close for fourth. Number three, Vincero uh, took all the play here at eight to five. And this uh, Irish bred by Rote, despite being bred for the turf and being more of a turf horse, handled his uh, GPW main track debut just fine. He also did it off the claim for Safi Joseph Jr and leading rider Edgar Zayas. This was Edgar's 19th win of the current meet. Next up is Thursday's featured fifth race, a high-level $48,000 allowance optional claimer featuring a very talented field of horses with some serious back class. They meet on the grass at one mile, and we go back to Pete Aiello for the call. And they're off. Clean beginning. Toward the inside, Chief Exchanger gets the first call and tries to establish the lead. Swagger Jagger, the public pick, moves to be second. Hoosier Drama backs off and tucks in third. Leitoni is on the inside, outside, and farther out is Local Hero. Second last is DeRocher, and the early trailer is High Kodiak Warrior. Into the first turn they go. Chief Exchanger holds the inside edge and a narrow lead over Swagger Jagger, who races from second. Local Hero dropped over nicely. He'll race third behind the top two. Racing in fourth is Hoosier Drama, followed by Leitone. Then it's a two-length margin to DeRocher, second last. The trailer is High Kodiak Warrior. 
into the backstretch they race and Jaramillo gives some more rain to Swagger Jagger. He responds by taking an outright lead of a length and a quarter. Chief Exchanger will angle appear it appears to be second, racing in third as local hero. Leitoni has now moved up fourth ahead of Hoosier Drama, who's back to fifth. DeRocher still second last, and High Kodiak Warrior is still last. And he's about nine or ten lengths off the lead of Swagger Jagger. Into the far turn they race. Swagger Jagger by a length and a half. Chief Exchanger is second. Local Hero is third. Back to fourth, Leitone, who toward the inside Hoosier Drama starts to launch a bid. Then back to DeRocher. High Kodiak Warrior has played no part in this with a quarter of a mile left to go. Swagger Jagger turns for home on top. Far outside, Hoosier Drama starts a rally. DeRocher cut the corner nicely. He tries to punch home. Local Hero is next. Final eighth of a mile, Swagger Jagger with work to do. Down the center, DeRocher from between Hoosier Drama. Local hero right there as Swagger Jagger hits the wall. Here's Who's Your Drama to take the lead. Swagger Jagger second. Who's Your Drama wanted? Strong ride from Vasquez and Who's Your Drama got past Swagger Jagger, then DeRocher and Local Hero. Well, how about that gray Who's Your Drama? Huge late run, cutting down a loose on the lead and odds on favorite in the number three Swagger Jagger. Who's Your Drama has been really good, winning back-to-back -back races of late for trainer Peter Walder. And Miguel Vasquez hits double digits in the GPW win column, his 10th victory of the meet. And we're more than halfway home. We've got that final pick three coming up. Stay tuned for race number six. And go Zipper! Blows them away with an eye-opening performance. Odds of again has won. Go Sapper kicking clear. Judy the beauty. And that last pick three does begin with a hearty welcome back to Thoroughbred Action. Thursday's sixth race. Seven furlongs. These are three and up claimers that have not won a race since April 18th. Claiming prices are $6,250. Take it away, Pete. And they're off. Clean beginning. From the outside, Polygram, one of the first to break the line. Grand Identity Dad has speed. Far outside, it's Moonlight Bandit. In between horses, that's Wild Winter, much closer than usual. He's up near the lead today. Down inside is My Charming Clyde. Then it's a length and a half to over limit. Out the back door early are Canticlaro and the Wayne Factor. Down the back stretch they go. Grand Identity Dad leads by a neck at the 5 8. Wild Winter into the bit under Mike Allen and right alongside. Polygram between horses, My Charming Clyde toward the rail, followed by Moonlight Bandit, then over limit. Two back to the inside of the Wayne Factor. The trailer is Canticlaro. There's half a mile to run in the race, and here's the 11-year-old My Charming Clyde to inject some more pace as Wild Winter has a neck in front. Three wide out there in Polygram back to fourth Grand Identity Dad. The Wayne Factor splits horses. Speaking of factors, over limit has been no factor as Wild Winter appears to have his mind on business. With the major class drop and in from Presque Isle, it's Wild Winter the one to beat. He's a quarter of a mile from home and four on top. From between horses, that's Polly Grandma joins second. The Wayne Factor makes a bit on the outside, and they're at the top of the stretch. It's Wild Winter set down for the drive. From the outside, Polly Graham tries to get to him. The Wayne Factor throws his hat into the wing with an eighth of a mile to go. Mike Allen asks for one more furlong from Wild Winter, who says, Mike, I've got you covered. It's Wild Winter making his South Florida return and winning one. He's a four-length winner. Polly Graham is second. Third is the Wayne Factor, and fourth is my charming Clyde. Wild Winter, the number five in from Presque Isle Downs, over a track. This well-traveled eight-year-old gelding by Wildcat Air had previous and prior success over. He recaptured some of that old form for trainer Don Robertson and Mike Allen, the winning rider there of the five, Wild Winter. Let's move on to race number seven as we head to the main track. In fact, we stay on the main. We'll get on to this three and up claiming race. Claiming prices are $10,000. And they're off. Far outside, Trio of Champions gets the first call and goes firing for the top. Giant Dilemma has speed. No dinero from the rail. Sent along by Gary Bain, and No dinero has an early tussle with Giant Dilemma. Trio of Champions is third. Back to fourth is Blind Ruckus, ahead of Dr. Harlan, then Mikado. Second last early is Artist, and the early trailer is Rangers coming.
They make their way past the half mile point and get ready to move to the far turn with no dinero in front by a length. Trying to secure the rail is Blind Ruckus on the outside and trio of champions. Giant Dilemma's there. There's another runner there as well, and that's Dr. Harlan who got into the two path for Monterey Jr. and he's up and up for the lead. Back next is Mikado racing ahead of a retreating artist, and then the trailer still remains. Rangers coming. They run to the top of the stretch. Dr. Harlan with a nifty move off the top of the turn. He leads into the drive by three parts of a length. From the outside and trying to get after him, second trio of champions. Blind Ruckus toward the inside. No Dinero is still right there with an eighth of a mile to go. It's Dr. Harlan on top. No Dinero tries him one more time. Dr. Harlan clear with an eighth of a mile to go. On the outside and trio of champions, then uh, back to Blind Line ruckus. No, De Niro did not kick on. Dr. Harlan, the turn move won it under Monterey. Three lengths to the good. Trio of champions second. Blind ruckus third. Right off the maiden win, the number six, Dr. Harlan, showed up with big speed and just obliterated this field. This was a career best effort from this well bred but lightly raced son of the late Harlan's holiday, Pedro Castillo and Pedro Monterey Jr. teaming up for the victory. The six, Dr. Harlan, at four to one in race number seven. Well, that's seven down, one to go if you're keeping score. Back with the nightcap after this. And here we go with race number eight. Last call here, folks. One mile on the turf for the finale. Three and up maiden claimers running for claiming tags of 16,000. And runners away. Level beginning. From between horses, Bragg Dude wins the break. Down at the inside, Mr. Sense moves to challenge. Far outside, Colin O'Winner is a little bit wide exiting that turf shoot. Alongside White Sock Wolf and Wyatt's Warrior. Saving ground is Simard Strike ahead of Mr. Chaplin. Chop Chop Charlie second last, and the early trailer is fighting Irish Tabbit. Into the first turn they race, and now off the lead is Bragg Dude by two lengths over White Sock Wolf, the nearest pursuer second. Mr. Sense is at the rail third. Colin a winner now moves inside of Wyatt's Warrior and takes over fourth. Back to fifth is Wyatt's Warrior. Back to sixth, Mr. Chaplin. Simard strike slams on the brakes. Two better than Chop Chop Charlie. And fight an Irish Tabot is last. Strung out over about a dozen lengths in the run to the half mile point with Bragg Dude back on the grass and in front by a length and a quarter. From the outside in second is White Sock Wolf, the gray Mr. Sense third. Colin a winner, patiently handled by Camacho, fourth in the two path. Two better than Mr. Chaplin. Then three to Simard Strike ahead of Chop Chop Charlie. Wyatt's Warrior plummets to second last. Fight and Irish Tabot remains at the back as they round the far turn. Up front, Bragg Dude comes under pressure to hold the lead as Colin a winner gets a bit closer second. Mr. Sense looks for racing room from third. Back to fourth and Mr. Chaplin from the outside and Chop Chop Charlie swung into action by Panici five wide and they're at the top of the stretch Colin a winner now strides to the lead Mr. Chaplin into the clear down the center toward the inside Bragg dude is battling back but now Mr. Chaplin powers past at the 16th pole Mr. Chaplin a length and a quarter back to second is Bragg dude then Colin a winner and chop chop Charlie Mr. Chaplin won it Bragg dude was second Colin a winner was third then chop chop Charlie and Mr. Sen. And Pedro Castillo sweeps the late double, upset the seventh race with Dr. Harlan, and right back in the winner's circle at a good price, 13 and change on the number four, Mr. Chaplin. Carlos Lugo did a good job on this five-year-old son of Tappet, who was going best of all and just cranked up with that wide outside run over the four to five favorite, the number nine, Colin a winner. Late pick five paid $2,003.35. A Rainbow Six carryover waiting for you right here at Gulfstream Park West of more than $25,000. And that's it. A strong effort earlier in the afternoon by Bimini, who handled the mile perfectly in the second race. And a few other big efforts on the day, including Edgar Zayas. He leads all local riders here at Gulfstream Park West, heading into another weekend and a Friday car that includes that Stronic 5. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Happy handicapping. We'll see you tomorrow right here on Thoroughbred Action.
the hay. Hit the hay. I've been working all day. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. What do you say? Hit the hay. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. Well, I'm tired. Let me tell you, Jack. I'm so tired. 